Hello, I'm James Goulding, editor of Technology Reseller magazine, and I'm here today with Adam Zoldan, founder and director of Knight Corporate Finance, a boutique corporate finance advisory firm. Adam, good to see you. Good to meet you. Um, perhaps you could start by giving us a bit of information on Knight Corporate Finance and what you do and who, who you serve. Sure thing. So um, we are ad uh, advisors uh, that focus very much on it within the technology sector um, and our services fall into four main pillars really. So uh, we help with strategy uh, and we advise on strategy mainly with a view to a transaction at some point in the future. Um, we help companies with um, funding and potentially investment. Uh, very rarely we will advise on acquisitions. Generally, we're always working for the seller or the party looking to raise money. And what we're best known for is our ability to achieve very successful exits for over 180 clients now. 2023 was your 15th anniversary. How has your area of corporate finance changed in that time? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting, actually. Um, so when we started, just to give time frame, it's 2008. So we were mid financial crisis, uh, about the same time that Lehman went bust. Uh, so obviously the perfect time to start to start our business. Um, but the thing was, both Paul and I, the, who founded Knight, both had a good background in 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 comms, um, and we knew that there was a real potential for a lot of transaction activity. But there was no one providing sort of good industry knowledge based advice to particularly to, to entrepreneurs and business owners. And that was the premise. So when we started the market, people weren't really that aware of the potential for transactions and the value of their businesses. And the market was much younger still. So really the, the recurring revenue businesses was confined to things like minutes and line rental and broadband. And so really what we've seen over the last uh, 15 years is two things change. Number one, the market evolving, so these small, I won't say tin pot companies, but, but pretty basic companies evolve um, into sort of, you know, the MSP, IT sector and into the cloud and across all sectors. And so the companies themselves become very much more complex and sophisticated. And equally, um, there's also a greater understanding of, of business worth and the fact that uh, by, by growing and investing in your business, it creates you know, genuine value and that can be realized. So, so the, the major change from when we started to today is that businesses are actually focused on, on value and value realization, maybe not from the outset, but at a point when they realize they've got something there. And, and, and that must uh, require a lot of sort of detail and complexity. Are, are your clients aware of what's involved when they come to you? No, um, some are. Uh, generally, um, they're aware of transaction activity. I mean, you know, just in context, we're only small, but across the ICT spectrum, every single working day, there's one deal. And that's in a year where the market was actually 30% down on last year. There's still a transaction a day. Um, so the, they're, everyone's very aware of a deal. They're very aware that there's value. They don't necessarily know what's involved. Um, and so, you know, we might meet customers years in advance of, of a transaction happening because we like to sit down and make sure that they do know what's involved. It's a, it's a complex, time-consuming, resource-intensive process. Doesn't sound great. We love it. Um, but it's very important for people to understand that. And our advice to, to everybody that we meet is generally start at the end, actually work out the aspiration, work out the ambition, work out you want to get where you want to get to, and then build a plan to get there. Okay, so it, it's, um, people should get in touch with you long before they actually plan yeah, to everyone, exit. Everyone's welcome to give us a buzz. We're, we're, we're happy to, to provide advice, formal or informal. Um, because uh, a well-prepared business uh, um, that have invested in, uh, in their company in the right way are the, are the companies that, that um, realise the best value for their, for their business. 
And, and you mentioned that there's a, a transaction every day of the year. Yeah. Um, so there's still a, a lot of sort of in, in interest in, in sort of M and A. There are. This is a. Th so there is a lot of interest in M and A always because it's um, you know it's a well a well trodden path. This sector, particularly this re re the recurring revenue side of it, um, ha is particularly attractive. It's seen as relatively safe because there's consistent money coming in every week or every month, and you know. You know, during COVID, we thought uh, deals might die on their feet, but actually it resulted in more money being funneled away from other sectors towards ours. Um, and that has stayed the case. So the market is not easy at the moment. Um, you know, interest rates are having a, a huge effect, both on um, acquirers' ability to raise money and our clients' ability to, or our clients' customers' ability to, to spend on on technology but the fact is the confidence in the sector remains high and that drives deals so in, in 2021 you were acquired by k3 capital what, what what impact has that had on your operations and the services you you offer yeah it was inter it was interesting it's had no impact on us at all um, we are we are still locked in um, k3 was a listed company um, and we, we, you know, we don't have the luxury of recurring revenue in our business. We weren't sure that, um, that we would be able to sell it. So we, um, we were pretty flattered when, when, we, when we got the approach. Um, and we negotiated a deal in the same way we do for our clients. So that side of it was normal, although we actually experienced the emotions um, that, that our clients do at the same time, which clearly we, we hadn't done before. Um, the interesting thing for me has been working in a large organisation again, um, and but at, but at a higher level, so to see the machinations, that's been good. The other interesting point was that uh, it was listed on the stock market. The stock market has not moved over the last couple of years, uh, generally not because of companies' performance, but more macro factors. And that actually resulted in a private equity buyout um, of, of the entire business uh, earlier this year. And so to live through that, again, sort of, you know, sitting on, in the seat of my clients was, was quite interesting. Um, but yeah, from our perspective, they're great people. Uh, we're still doing what we, we love to do. We're still growing, so it's been good. It's interesting what you're saying about experiencing what all your clients have gone through. Are there any lessons you've learned from, from that process? The, well, yeah, we tried to follow our own advice. We tried to follow our own advice, um, even though we weren't as prepared as we, we tell our, our clients to be. Um, but but we, we came up to speed pretty quick. Um, and that really is, is the key, just, just to be prepared. Our business is, is simple, so it wasn't so hard. Um, but I guess what people think we do and what we actually do um, it are two different things. And the perceptions that our client have of us at the beginning to what they have of us at the end uh, is quite interesting as well. Um, I guess people think, uh, you know, we go out, um, we, create, we create a lot of noise and competition for our clients, uh, we get a great price and we negotiate, you know, the, we negotiate a deal and then we go off and, uh, and drink champagne and have lunch. And, and really we do do that, but that's, less than half the deal, and that is what we call the fun bit. The real work starts once you've agreed the terms of the deal, and to, to get the company through a whole process of due diligence, a whole process of, of legal document execution, and that's the feedback that we get from our clients when they finished is they had, uh, they'd completely underestimated the work that was required and the work that we do during that period to finish the deal, um, as opposed to just you know, getting a nice number for them. And you're um, obviously well known in the, in, the, in the telecoms and IT space. Is that still where you focus? It is, yeah. I mean, we do, we, we do pick up other, other types of deals just through word of mouth and recommendation. Um, but that's a sector that we know. So um, the, the reason that's important is other than our clients don't have to educate us. We know, we know what they do and, and um, so sort of we know the key metrics and, and the, the, the products and services and so on. And, uh, and 
What, what uh, recent transactions are you most proud of and why? Um, it's a, it's a, a tricky one. Um, the, personally, for me, the types of deals I get most satisfaction out of uh, uh, hard-working owner-managers that have built the business from scratch. They have a plan. They know what they're going to do moving forwards. Um, and the businesses... When you start them, you've got nothing to lose. Once you've built them, you've got everything to lose. It's the biggest aspect of, of your wealth and it's all locked up in, in the business. And when you have a client that has these dreams and aspirations and by, by selling their business, you're effectively helping them realize those. Um, uh, that, that's just amazingly satisfying, especially if we generally stay in touch. Um, so to hear, to hear what they're doing is, is probably the most satisfying satisfying part of the part of the job rather than just working on a super blockbuster massive deal have the expectations and demands of your clients changed much in the last 15 years and if so in what ways no it's it just it, it it's a it's a very very personal thing and it's a, a privilege and a and a great responsibility to work work on a life-changing process and transaction with with one of our clients and um, people react differently it's generally stressful and emotional uh, to to one extent or another and that that's when I guess you get to know who you're you know more about your client um, uh, you know during uh, the heat of a deal you get to know people really well and you know, I'm generally speaking to my clients more than I am to my family. It's part of it, um, and everybody's different. And so, Adam, what are your priorities for 2024? Well, we're still investing in, in the company, investing in people, um, trying to get out, as, as, as meet as many as we can and, and, and grow our business. But in terms of um, what our hopes for, for 2024, clearly, um, we're expecting government change and the uncertainty that that is bringing. Um, we'd love to see interest rates fall because that makes that you know it's generally good good for the economy and good for deals. Um, the you know the um, the transaction activity has mainly been driven by private equity and the huge investment we've had in the sector um, and you know the number of buying builders or acquirers that we're seeing is still at an all-time high. Um, in order to maintain confidence, what we need is for the private equity guys to make money. Um, we actually didn't see many of those this year, but we're hoping that some of the big consolidators are going to either sell or flip on to new investors. And uh, some, of the, some of the PE institutions that invested in, in the sector see a good return on that money because that itself will drive confidence, it will drive deals, and it will drive value for everybody. Thanks very much, Adam. That, that was very interesting, and lots of food for thought for our uh, viewers. Um, preparation seems to be the watchword. Um, great, thank you, Adam. Thanks for your time, thank you.